Hi guys, there is here a laptop's computer, my board. The laptop has no lights and the battery doesn't charge. Let's watch how to fix it. There is not a standard procedure about how to find the problem, but there is a troubleshooting procedure about how to try to find the bad electronic component. That is what we are going to do now. First, we have to make a charge inspection. We need a visual inspection of any damage in cables, broken charger, mechanical structure, and make a measurement of the output voltage in the charger. Second, we must make an input voltage measurement in the main board. In this case, we have to come here, connect the charger, plug it to the electricity, and to try to find out what is the voltage. Remember guys, your laptop is different than this, but the procedure is the same. The connector is not alike, but what you're going to do is the same. I follow the connector and I have no voltage here. That means there is a charge circuit in the main board because the charger has voltage, but it drops the voltage to zero when I connect it. Next step was to make a measurement of the fuse. Fuse could be different in any computer. Sometimes they look like a kind of flat green resistor or the bottle drop a green resistor or sometimes like a flat white resistor. That's something that you will have to study and to find out to identify them. Once again, in my case, the, resist the fuse is good. So now I'm totally sure I have a short circuit in my board and the problem is not related with the charger or the main fuse. Back to the board. Next step is to use the digital multimeter. Set it in the ohms measurements or continuity with the beep. The trick is connect the negative lead to the mass of the printed circuit board. Use the positive lead and try to identify the main capacitors and go for them and try to find out if there is a short circuit. Any capacitor could have one of the leads connected to ground, but no either one will give you continuity. Let's check what we say. I will flip the board. Maybe here. Here I have the mine capacitors. They are not only around the microprocessor, they could be in different places. One lead is grounded, but not the other. One lead is grounded, but not the other. Not this one, maybe this one. If you cannot find a short circuit in the main capacitors, go for the next size of capacitors. You could have continuity in one side, but not the other. Most of the time, we have a capacitor in short circuit, we will get a big area in short circuit and all the electronic components in short circuit. In my case, this laptop was full in short circuit. Even capacitors like this, they were in short circuit. Not now, because what I did 
Do you see one side continuity but not the other? What I did is if you pay attention to these little pads, they are jumping switches or jumping pads. What you have to do is to remove the solder on it and you will insulate one stage of the circuit from the other. At the end of the telling, once that I start insulating all the stages of the circuit, my last stage with a short circuit was this area and the capacitors under the microprocessor. I open this, pa this pad that you watch here and I try by test and error to find out that this capacitor here I lift them with the soldering iron is in short circuit. Let's see it. Touching the printer circuit board, there is not continuity. Touching the, this capacitor, not, but touching this capacitor, yes. And the other side, two. Either side of the capacitor is in short circuit. This guy is the bad guy in this movie and needs to be replaced. Now, there is always a question. What is the value of the original capacitor? The truth is, we don't know. I have a trick to replace them. Is a capacitor that is in parallel to the voltage source is always about, let's say, 0.1 microfarads and is used to reduce the noise. A capacitor next to other capacitor is used as a circuit tank to supply more current and most of the time its parameters or its capacity in microfarads and volts is equal to its neighbor so I can release the neighbor and just copy the data and replace the capacitor with the same information. This guy is how to find out a short circuit in a motherboard using all the troubleshooting procedures we know like the voltage input testing the fuse testing the capacitors the main capacitors in the circuit and insulating the pads to insulate the stages at the end to get the area with the bad capacitor and go by test and error to find out which one is the bad guy by opening one side of the capacitor from the solder. Remember guys, it's not always about capacitors. Any electronic component in this mind board could be bad. One of them or more than one of them. It could be a transistor, it could be a capacitor, it could be an IC and we'll have to find a way to find this bad guy. The main problem is when the capacitor is not totally bad and the resistor is not totally bad and they test, test uh, good but they are not working fine. Now, even with the complications, we got it. Thanks by watching the video. If you like it, don't forget to give a like and don't forget to subscribe.